This is number three in the series. It's the Lord's Table. And um, this one uh, for subtitle, The Very First Communion. The Very First Communion. The uh, upper room is mentioned in historical documents way back to the fourth century. And, and, and for hundreds of years, Christians have gone there and they, they go to the upper room and they pray and they, a lot of times they'll take communion and, and, and remember that all that took place in the upper room. And the practice of communion was established by Jesus in the upper room. Why? I'm glad you asked. Was, was he just merely giving his disciples a new religious tradition? What exactly did it mean when he commanded them to do this in remembrance of me? And why is Judas Iscariot mentioned in close connection with communion in all of the Gospels? The first communion, of course, is documented in all four of the Gospels, which is really wild because most things aren't on all four of them. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all contain segments of the communion. And each one of them offers an interesting perspective and some insight that will connect the, the components that we've talked about already in the ancient traditions of covenant keeping. And so we're going to begin our study today with Matthew chapter 26, verses 14 through 16. Matthew 26, verses 14 through 16. Then one of the twelve called Judas, then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went unto the chief priest and said unto them, What will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. And from that time he sought opportunity to, to pray him. The priest covenanted with Judas. That's very important. And you're going to see it tells us that Judas partook of communion, the covenant meal with Jesus. But he'd already entered into covenant with the religious leaders. It's important that you keep that up there, okay? Now, Matthew 26, verses 20 through 21. Now, when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. In the Greek word, uh, betray is paradidomai, which means to deliver or hand over to somebody else. It means to hand over somebody in the act of betrayal. Matthew 26, verse 25. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. Notice Judas called Jesus what? Master. He was not calling him Lord. He was calling him masterful teacher. Judas never ever addressed Jesus as Lord in any of the Gospels. He always called him teacher or rabbi. And that tells us that Judas had a clink in his fellowship with the Lord. He only recognized him as teacher, but never to submitted himself to Jesus' supreme authority as Lord. See, isn't this fun? Okay, verse 26, 27, Matthew 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, break it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, he gave thanks, gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. Remember, we looked at the nine components of the, communion, of the covenant, right? And, and the bread and wine, which are key elements, by the giving and breaking of bread, Jesus said, Everything I have is at your disposal. All my wealth is at your disposal. My possession, even my body itself is at your disposal. And Jesus was saying, I give my whole life to you. I give my life's blood to you to empower to you the promises I've made to you. Verse 28, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is said for many of the remission of sins. This word testament in the Greek is diatheke. 
maybe. <laughs> I have to look at these through a concordance just like most of us would, okay? So if I make a misunderstanding of the Greek word, just kind of go with me on it, you know, and walk in grace, we'll be okay. But that depicts a covenant made between two people or more. Jesus was cutting a covenant with his disciples. That's so important. Verse 30, when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. During the Passover meals, I think this is fun, Psalms 113 and 114 are sung midway through the Passover meal. And then at the end, Psalms 115 and Psalms 18, 118 are sung at the end. And so that was what they did. The Psalms was a songbook, okay? And although Matthew's gospel doesn't say that Judas left the upper room gathering, we know he left, and we know he went to the chief priest with whom he had covenanted, get this, and then he led them to Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane and betrayed the Lord into his hands. And what happened to Judas after that? Well, Matthew chapter 27, verse 3, then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself. Now, if you've been in Ramah, you know that word re repent is not the same word as like you repent from sin. This repent here is, I'm, I'm sorry I got caught, okay? I'm remorseful, but that's the way it goes. He repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. Verse 5, and he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. When Judas repented now, it's not the same word. That was, the, the word that he, they used for him was sorrow, mourning, grief, seized with guilt, seized with remorse, seized with regret. Even though he was sorrowful, he did it. He didn't repent of it. There's a difference with being your hand caught in a cookie jar and getting caught and being truly repentant for having your hand in a cookie jar. True repentance is a change of mind. It is a, it's just a complete change of heart. It produces a change in direction. It, 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 it changes your behavior. Judas was filled with guilt. He was filled with regret, but eventually it just led to suicide because he truly didn't repent. Why do you think this has happened? Gee, I'm glad you asked. Components of covenant were at work. Now see, if you've been at the beginning of this, you'll know exactly where this goes. Judas sat and received the bread and wine that Jesus offered, and he pretended to make a covenant with Jesus. The truth is, he had already made a covenant with the priests. Come on. And so when, he part when Judas partook of this bread and wine, he did it unworthily. This brought the curse of the covenant down on him, and he ended up dying. Communion is a very serious thing, folks, and I hope we get a hold of this. Now let's look at the first communion according to Mark. Mark chapter 14, verses 10 through 11. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priest to betray him unto them. When they had heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money, and he sought how he might conveniently betray him. Keep reading, verses 17 and 18. And the evening he cometh with the twelve. And as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, One of you which eateth me shall betray me. Again, the word betray means to, to uh, turn over uh, in the act of betrayal. Mark's depiction of this is really quite similar to Matthew's. Verses 22 and 24. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread, blessed, break it, gave to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. He took the cup. When he gave it thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood. Wow. This is my blood of the new... You know, I, I, I'm thinking sometimes, you know, when they're sitting there, they must have just been dumbfounded. They didn't have a clue what was going on because here Jesus said, this is my body and this is my blood. Oh, wait a minute. We're not supposed to drink blood and that's bread. How can that be your body? I mean, duh. Yeah. They were sitting right there with him and didn't comprehend what he was saying. Amen. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. And so they became united as one, right? Okay. 
Verse uh, 26, when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Now, the first communion according to Luke, uh, Luke we have a lot of the facts uh, mentioned again, but he brings some details out concerning Judas. Luke chapter 22, verses 3 through 6. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. Some people say, well, Judas was never an apostle. Yes, he was. I said, yes, he was. He was as much an apostle as Peter, James, all of God. Yeah, okay. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and caps how I might betray him unto them. And they were glad and covenant to, and covenant with and covenant to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto the absence of the multitude. Again, Jesus covenant with the with the chief priest, and this was the religious bunch that wanted Jesus out of the way. Got it? And so they they promised Judas some money in return uh, when a, you know get him in an area where there's not a lot of crowds around so we can you know take him. And one element in Luke's rendition is different from Matthew and Mark's, and that's in his initial statement, verse three of Luke chapter twenty-two. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. Something inside Judas's heart and Judas's mind wasn't right, and he gave access to Satan, which would soon prove to be his actual downfall. Verse 14, And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. Verse 17, he took the cup, gave thanks, said, Take this, and divide it among yourselves. Verse 19, He took bread, and gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Verse 20, Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you. Here again, we see the components of the covenant. But in verse 19, right at the end, he says, This do in remembrance of me. This is the only place in the gospel where these words appear. And I believe they're pretty significant. The words, this do, this do, in the Greek is is a word, tuto. (laughs) And it means, this very thing do. This very thing do. Not suggested. This very thing do. Do this very thing. Find a way to do it. Do it creatively, but do it. And the word remembrance is uh, anamnesis. That means to repeat something over and over again. It's to recall something, to be mindful of something. Jesus was saying, recall, recollect, and remember what I'm doing, and you do this very thing. It's a twofold command here, I believe. First, he was instructing his disciples, his disciples, his disciples, then and now, to take communion with each other, just as he was doing. And he was, I believe, establishing this practice, this ordinance of communion in the church. At the same time, he was also telling the disciples, oh, you ever wonder sometimes, you know, when you look at stuff and you think, oh, I wish he hadn't put that in there. (laughs) He was telling his disciples, his who? Who's that? There you go. Amen. You that don't have hands yet will pray. (laughs) Just as you see me entering into a sacrificial covenant with each of you, I want you to enter into covenant with each other. I want you to be people of covenant, walking in covenant with one another. This do, and do it the same way you see me doing it. So not only did he want us to be covenant with him, he wanted us to be covenant one with another. We are all one in Christ Jesus. People down at First Church, if they're born again, they are one with you in Christ Jesus. Amen. Just because they got the name First Church or Presby Booba Dwight or Eon over the, over the front of the, if they're born again, they're one with you. That's going to mean something when we get to the next lesson. Okay. We need to understand that. Now, John, now we're going to go to John, and his was really interesting because 
this gets into this personal side of Jesus. This shows Jesus and how really hard that he really tries. John chapter 13, verse 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world. He loved them unto the end. Unto the end is a, is a word telos, and it means he loves them forever, completely, fully. Jesus is telling us that he loved his disciples with, with the fullness of love that they could ever receive all the way to the end of his life. He'd never stop loving them. Never. God will never stop loving you. Amen. Amen. You can't be mean enough for God to stop loving you. So quit trying. Verse 2, John 13. Supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas to carry out Simon's son to betray him. This verse is similar to uh, Luke 22, 3, and it states that something wasn't right in Judas's heart. It opened the door. Remember that? Open the door. Huh? And it opened the door for the devil to enter in and poison Judas. Now, we know that he was offended with Jesus. Uh, Jesus because it festered and it turned into bitterness. Offenses will stop your faith and turn into bitterness. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> Just want to see if you're all there this morning. Judas had no right to sit at the table and partake of that covenant meal with Jesus, but he did so in an unworthily manner. Verse 4 and 5. Does this help anybody yet? Yes. Wait till we get to the next one. Boy, it's going to be a kicker, I'll tell you. He riseth from supper, laid aside his garments, took a towel, girded himself. After that, this Jesus, he poured water into a basin, began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Now, we don't understand a lot of times on foot washing, but one of the things that, uh, because of dusty roads and things like that, you know, when you had visitors a lot of time, as a, as a matter of being just accommodating to them, and, and uh, you would wash their feet, because they're all dusty and dirty and everything else, okay? And as a courtesy. Now, it's kind of interesting because the washing of the feet is only mentioned in John Gospel. Now, watch this. One of the amazing facts about this is Judas was there. Judas' feet was among the feet that Jesus washed. Wow. Imagine the weight of that situation. Judas had already made a covenant with the chief priest. And betrayal in his heart, he received the bread and the wine and the covenant meal, all the time knowing what he was going to do. And Jesus knew it. Remember? One of you will betray me. Remember that? Jesus knew this. And there was Jesus on his knees before the guy who sold him out for 30 pieces of silver and washed his feet. That was the mercy of God being extended to Judas. One more time. One more time. Please. But Judas didn't repent didn't yield. After Jesus had finished washing uh, uh, their feet, he turned to them all and said in verse 18 of John 13, I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. 21, when Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, very, very, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Jesus was just basically saying, 
one of you sitting at this table, one of you who just partook of the bread and wine, who partook of all that I have and all that I've given to you, one of you has sold me out. One of you said you had covenant with me, but in truth, you're not in covenant with me at all. You've already made up your mind to betray me. Wow. I have a line and box theology on this one. I think if Jesus would have pointed his finger at Judas, I think Peter would have took him out. <laughs> I, you know, Peter was kind of a wild guy, you know. <laughs> 13, John 13, verse 26 through 27. Jesus answered, He it is whom to whom I shall give you a sop. King James, sop. A morsel of food, a piece of bread, okay? When I have dipped it. When he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Verse 27, after the sop, Satan entered into him, then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest do quickly. Now the word Satan in verse 27 is Satanas. That means one who hates, accuses, slanders, or conspires against another, an adversary. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Amen. So don't help him. You all understand sign language? Yeah. If you're always seeking after a sign, here's one. Got it? The reason Satan could enter him is because Judas gave place to him. Uh, I keep a knocking, but you can't come in. I can't. Anyway, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20. Oh, there's an open door. Oh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, 27. Be ye angry and sin not. So you can have a righteous anger about you, and it's okay, but don't let sin get into it. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Before you go night, night, you better make sure everything's okay, because you may go night, 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 night. Verse 27. Let's read that out loud, shall we? Together. Ready? Neither give place to the devil. One more time. Neither give place to the devil. The word place in the Greek, ye, is topos, which means any geographical location, place, or anything. Any kind of place. Don't even crack the door. Now, we do know, you might think about this for a minute. Judas never, you know, like we mentioned earlier, Judas never really agreed that Jesus was Lord. He was always a teacher, rabbi, that sort of thing. But we do know how maybe some of this took place. Remember when uh, the little lady with the perfume, very expensive, uh, she took that expensive bottle of perfume and poured it on his feet? Judas didn't like that. He was offended at that. And in any case, offense was lodged in Judas's heart, and he never dealt with it. Hurt will become dirt for the seeds of betrayal to grow. One more time. Hurt will become the dirt in which the seeds of betrayal grow. So don't let the hurt become the dirt for betrayal. And, and how the other disciples respond to this? Verse 28. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spoke this unto them. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag, he was the treasurer, that Jesus had said unto them, Buy those things that we have need for against the, of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. This was Jesus' perfect opportunity to expose Judas. But he didn't do it. Instead, Jesus silenced covered the sin which was in Judas's heart. And again, Jesus extended love and mercy to Judas 
giving him another opportunity to turn and repent, but Judas wouldn't do it. Verse 30, John 13. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. Say night. night. Symbolically, Jesus left the light of the presence of God and didn't just enter into physical darkness. He entered into eternal darkness. All of this took place in the upper room. The Last Supper, the First Communion. The washing of the disciples' feet, Jesus' confirmation that G Judas was the betrayer. In actuality, in John's Gospel, this is fun, in God, John's Gospel, chapters 14, 15, 16, and 17, all take place in the upper room. It was there that Jesus announced the coming of the Holy Spirit and shared what his role would be in the lives of the believers when he comes. It was also a place where Jesus prayed his high priestly prayer for his disciples. Well, do we have anything outside the Gospels? I'm glad you asked. The Apostle Paul, who wasn't there, get this, the Apostle Paul was not there. And it's interesting because the Apostle Paul had revelation knowledge of what was going on that night. The people that were there, the disciples were there, thought it was really okay, but they didn't understand. But the Apostle Paul, as revealed by the Holy Spirit, received revelation. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord. See, I received this of the Lord. I was not there. The Holy Ghost revealed it to him. That which also I delivered unto you, the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he's betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Remember now, he wasn't there. Verse 25. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Verse 27. Get this one now. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Wow. The first communion and Jesus' instruction to the disciples then and now to have communion, have fellowship, not only with the Lord, but with one another. But whosoever shall drink the cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Now, next week, we're going to examine this passage and we're going to learn to what it means to partake of communion unworthily. Say unworthily. unworthily. I didn't say unworthy. I said unworthily. So next time we're going to learn about what it means to be guilty of the blood and body of Jesus. Wow. You getting some insights into this? Yes. You may not have heard some of this before about Jesus and Judas and communion and the upper room. It's a lot to learn. Amen.